Hi Tom, thanks for asking me to give you my tips on how to take a pre-anesthetic assessment. Before I go any further, I want to point out that I'm going to be talking about taking a pre-anesthetic history. I'm not going to be talking about interpreting investigations or performing an examination. And then before I dive into the specifics, I want to provide two general tips. And the first one is that if you've got an anesthetic chart or some sort of pro forma, then use that because that often helps you not miss anything. The other thing is that if you've got the patient's notes, then use those. So look up as much as you can about the patient beforehand so that you can be efficient and, and focused when you do come to chatting with your patient. And also, you're not a medical student anymore, so use the information that's there. All right, in terms of the specifics that I look at, they come under three broad categories. So the first one is that I like to know why that patient is having that particular surgery on that particular day. Now often, depending on the context, this is already obvious. So for example, a patient who's coming in to be screened prior to their colonoscopy, they might've already had this procedure done many times before because they've been screened for bowel cancer or they've been followed up following their bowel cancer surgery. However, if it's a patient who's having emergency surgery, then I really wanna know why they're having that particular operation on that day. If you take the common example of a patient coming in for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, it could be because they're having biliary colic, or it could be because they've got ascending cholangitis or acute cholecystitis. So those latter two diagnoses have implications for the surgery and also the patient's risk of developing sepsis, either intraoperative, intraoperatively or postoperatively. So the next big topic that I then look for is whether they've had previous anesthetics, be they general or regional, and whether there's been any complications for them. Sometimes we consider only the medical kind of complications, but it's also nice to know what the patient's experience was because that might help to shape their expectations for this coming procedure. And then the third big topic, it's kind of all the medical issues. And there's three, I think, subcategories in that. So I start by looking at the patient's current medication list because that will often give me a guide as to what their current medical problems are. That's also, I think, particularly useful in patients who are coming for emergency surgery. So I have an idea of what types of analgesia, perhaps what antiemetics they've been on in the lead up to their surgery. Then following on from medications, it's a natural progression. I find out what their allergies are and what reactions they've had to those particular medications. And then knowing what medications they're on, I then take a targeted history of what their active medical problems are. I have a mnemonic that I use called DMC, based on a band in the 80s for how I question further about someone's medical problems. So the D stands for diagnosis, the M stands for management, and the C stands for complications. To provide another example, let's look at ischemic heart disease. So a patient may be labeled as having ischemic heart disease because they've got stable angina, it's being medically managed, and they haven't developed any complications from it. This is very different from a patient who, for example, has had a massive STEMI 10, 15 years ago. It was managed by CAGS, again, 10, 15 years ago. And perhaps they're getting complications now of recurrence of their, of their angina because they're getting instant or in-graft thromboses. This patient also might have some symptoms of cardiac failure and a reduced exercise tolerance. So that's how I would apply the DMC model to taking further history of a patient's medical problems. So they're the three big categories. What's the surgery? Why is it being done today? Previous anesthetics and their complications. What are the medications, allergies, and current medical problems? And then finally, I'll mop up everything else in a systems review. And that's where having that pro forma might be useful. That's where if I haven't asked about it before, their fasting status, if they've had any reflux, what their exercise tolerance is, or their activity level, those questions come into that final bit. If, but most of the time I've caught up with them in those first three categories. All right, so they're my big tips for taking a pre-anesthetic history. Of course, it's important to go and do an airway assessment and look at the investigations, particularly some things like chronic renal impairment. Patients may not know about that and patients may be asymptomatic, so it's important to look at the investigations to look at things like that. All right, I hope you find that useful. Look forward to finding out what the next question is.